Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Empire Life podcast. Today is a solo episode because I did have an appointment scheduled and then we needed to reschedule for unforeseen reasons. And I thought, well, I'm ready. I might as well come on. I'm Allison, your host of the Empire Life podcast, where we usually interview people from all around the world who are female founders just exploding in their businesses, super scaling their businesses. And today is a more solo episode to update you on some things that are going on in my life because there's a lot going on (laughs) just this last week in spring break. So last week was spring break. We got a new puppy, an AKC Doberman puppy, huge news. My daughter, who's a teenager, has been wanting a puppy for a really long time. And if you were following me before, We had a puppy for a short period of time a few years ago. We needed to rehome him because we just didn't have enough space. And it was really tragic and sad. And we have a lot more space. And we're also three people now because I'm engaged and I have an extremely supportive fiance named Will. And he is also helping with the puppy. We named him, or I should say my daughter named him Mars like the god of war (laughs) and he is extremely strong-willed already he is he's extremely expressive as well and if you want to follow all of his batty adventures he has his own instagram where he talks about his adventures firsthand or for in first person about himself it is at our doberman mars like o u r Doberman, the breed, and then M-A-R-S, his name, Mars, and R. Doberman Mars. I've been posting a lot of reels there, and I've been getting a great amount of photos and videos of him. He is nine weeks, I believe, this last Friday. So we drove all the way to El Paso in spring break to get him from a super reputable breeder who's an AKC certified breeder. And I really didn't want, I'm going to lean back a little bit here if you can see me on camera. I really didn't want a backyard breeder. I didn't even know there was a term for that. I saw that on Doberman Planet. Shout out to that channel. They've been really helping me a lot. I've been feeling really supported a lot with understanding the Doberman breed more. I had a Doberman growing up, but I really want to do a lot of training with this particular Doberman and this puppy, Mars. And... When I was researching breeders, my daughter and I were both researching them a lot. We wanted one where the dog was mostly raised inside with the family. So like a family raised puppy with their mom and dad, which is extremely rare. So the family, the couple that we went and picked him up from or bought him from, raised him for... We picked him up when he was eight weeks. They raised him for eight weeks with the mom and the dad and with a lot of the other puppies. If you can tell right now, I'm also having some allergies because I think I'm slightly allergic to dogs. (laughs) So I need to start doing some kind of allergy, natural allergy shots. And I've been doing no natural nose sprays. And I'm sure that we will all adjust because we're all having a little bit of allergies to the new puppy, Mars. And we needed to drive all the way to El Paso, which is about 15 hours or 10 to 15 hours, give or take, because we're stopping and going to the bathroom and getting some snacks. So we drove all the way to El Paso because of how reputable and amazing this breeder was and how much we love Mars when we saw his pictures on Instagram and on the AKC website. And then Instagram from there, because this particular breeder, they're super involved with knowing each of the puppy's temperaments. And we were able to ask that as well. We really wanted a puppy that was a little bit more chilled out (laughs) and relaxed because we're not super outdoorsy people. We go in our backyard. (laughs) That's about the extent of it. I'm not, I love working out, but I'm not super wanting to go hiking or ride horses or anything. I'm not a super outdoorsy person. So, and neither is my fiance or, or my daughter. 
or Lily. So I didn't think that we needed a really outdoorsy dog. And Mars is really laid back. Most of the time he's lounging around, he's laying around, or he's running around the backyard chasing his ball, and then he's ready to take another nap. So I would say that he is one of the most laid back dogs that I've ever seen. To give some updates on what he's doing right now in nine weeks, in this last week, I worked a lot with him, with giving a lot of positive affirmation in sitting. So we use the symbol for sit and then stay. We use the symbol and then come. We decided instead of going like with our hand towards ourselves, we take our hand to our chest and we say come and um, like our right hand across our chest. That's for, for come. And every time he exits a door, he has to sit, stay, and then someone needs to tell him to come. And we always exit the doors first. It's extremely important with really powerful dogs who are probably any dogs, but especially dogs that are going to be big because you don't want them to hit the side of your leg or knock you down or try to go on the side of you out the door. And it also makes it a lot easier for them to listen to you because they know that you're the one who's in control. You're the alpha when you go through the door first. So that's one thing that he's already started doing. And he's already started sitting by the door without us even needing to ask him because he has that routine. And when he comes back in from outside, he also needs to sit, stay, and then come after I've already walked through the door inside and then he comes through the door. And I put on my house shoes and then we wipe his paws also. So he's getting used to sitting or laying down while I wipe his paws off with a wipe when he's coming into the door and he's sitting on a rug. And then I wipe his face a little bit because he gets some eye gunk in the corner of his eye sometimes. And I wipe that off when he comes back inside. And he has a little pen in the living room that he's super cushy, comfortable, memory foam bed with a waterproof blanket over it and a few toys inside. And that's where he spends a lot of time lounging and biting on his toys. I think he's teething right now. So he's biting, he's needing to get a gum because he's probably having some pain in his mouth. So he's gumming on everything for a while. And he has that space in the living room to be able to do that. It's his zone or his puppy station, his puppy zone, and we call it his place. And he already knows when I say, go to your place, he already knows right now where his place is and how to get in that area. And it has a little gate that's latched so we can leave it open and he can go into his place. And this is all at nine weeks as I'm talking about it right now. He has been just great at listening and understanding uh, with the potty training. And that's a whole uh, another Oprah. <laughs> that's another story. He is also good at listening, but he's still learning how to potty train. He's waking up about every two hours right now to need to, for us to take him out of the crate and immediately go outside to pee or poop. But he, lately, he hasn't had any accidents. He's had maybe one of a few days when we first got him last week, which is incredible for such a young puppy. He is going to the back door already, kind of wincing just a little bit to let me know that he needs to go to the bathroom or he'll go to the edge of his puppy zone His in his X-Pen is what it's called. And... He'll let me know I need to come out of my X-Pen so I can go outside. And then he immediately pees and we take him back in or he gets some time to play outside. Trying to think of what else he's been up to. Just he gets he loves being petted. He is definitely wanting to Velcro to my side. Another thing I've been working with him outside we have a fairly big backyard thankfully and I can put him on the leash and I've been practicing a lot with him walking on the left side of me and because I learned that with a dog especially a bigger breed they're supposed to heel on the left side and come and sit like right a little bit behind your left leg so I've been working with him on that and he kind of scoots <laughs> when I say heel he's already starting to heel even without the leash 
he did once so far. And again, he's very young. So I'm assuming that he's going to get even better at healing as he gets older, but probably next week or the next week. So I'll be continuing to guide him and work with him about that. But he kind of scoots scoots a little bit with his butt and then he comes and he sits down at the left side and then I say release after as soon as he gets into position the heel position I say release and then I start walking as I say release and then he starts walking too and he's responded really well to the leash I would say the first day that I put the leash on him he was he put his head down a little bit and was pulling back with his body so he's definitely resistant to it the very first day but then now he's getting more used to it and he's not doing that anymore with the, he wants to chew on sticks and eat sticks or eat wood outside and eat dirt. And he loves eating the, the dandelion weeds, especially. I've also been giving him a few herbs. I give him passion flower right now. I've done melatonin a few times and I do this kind of oil, I think it's pronounced a high oil. And I already had these for uh, the humans in the house. <laughs> and I looked it up if, it, if those were safe for dogs and they're really self safe for dogs. So as some of you know, if you have had an experience with Dobermans, they're guard dogs, they're already bred to be extremely protective. So they're always on a high alert. And because of that, sometimes they can run high anxiety. and especially it's a new place he's away from his mom and dad and his brothers and sisters I really wanted to make sure that he was feeling calm and passion flower if you guys are listening is also amazing for humans or people it reduces your anxiety I'm this is not a medical claim by any means it's this herbal medicine and it calms your nervous system so I mean, again, I'm not making any medical claim here. It's a disclaimer. But in the herbal medicine literature, it can have the possibility to calm your nervous system and ease a person's anxiety. So for him, it really helped him to when I gave it to him. I gave it to him in a little dropper and I had him sit in front of me and then I tilted his mouth a little and just kind of dropped about maybe like 20 drops in into his mouth and he absolutely loved it he already loves herbal medicine <laughs> he wanted some more and he was licking his lips he was extremely happy about it with the oil that I've been giving him they actually do sell that one for dogs but I am giving him one that is for people as well because again I already had it because we take it ourselves here in this house and I add one of the capsules into his dog food and he just devours it. Often he eats that before he eats the rest of his dog food. And with the melatonin spray, I, I just squirted it a little bit in his mouth. I think I did two sprays and again, he loved it. He loves to eat the dandelion the weeds in the backyard too. They're not sprayed with any kind of chemicals. He likes to eat the grass. I guess it's probably good for his stomach and his digestion. He's been having really regular poops. One day we gave him, we got some uh, lick mats, which help you to stimulate your dog's uh, brain. And they help with reducing also kind of anxiety and behavior issues. And I spread just a tiny bit of peanut butter and it seemed to upset his stomach. So we didn't do that again the next day. And also, on another personal note, I'm planning a wedding for Will and I, so that is something that is ongoing. We're probably going to have a small ceremony and a huge reception, and the small ceremony is really close friends and immediate family, and then the huge reception will be all family and all kids and, and everybody. We've been talking a lot about this, and I think we finally came to a decision that this is the best fit for us. And we want to have an extremely uh, luxury, elevated experience for the small ceremony, and then a really relaxed, this chill vibe for the huge reception. We'll be at a house, a family's house, a family member's house, 
and the ceremony will be at a venue. And then I'm planning a Sweet 16 party for my daughter at the moment that will be at a venue too, and I've been talking with a party planner. So again, <laughs> lots going on. On the Empire Life side, we are gearing up to release our mastermind probably in about six months. So stay tuned for that. And then a few months after that, we will be enrolling more authors. So we published a best-selling book in 2021 with a group of female founders, and they also became best-selling authors. So we'll be publishing another book probably in 2024. So stay tuned for that as well. And if you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to me on Instagram. It's at Allison RMSY. And then our company page is Empire Life Academy. And now there's also Mars has a page, which is our Doberman Mars. And at this moment in time, let's see, today is March 21st. It's the week after spring break in 2022. And we have over 5 million people as a reach, as a whole global reach for all of our online platforms, our social media platforms. And it's continuing to grow every day. So again, we have over 5 million people in all of our online platforms. That's LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, our podcast, the blog, Quora, all of these areas, all of our online platforms. It's totaling to about that and growing every day and mostly female founders. So we do have podcast sponsorship opportunities, blog, guest post opportunities. And let me know if you have any questions about that. You can also find the applications for those, or you can send us a message on one of those platforms to learn more information about it. And as always, I hope that your business continues to be successful and you're scaling and just rocking it. Thank you.